everyone, and welcome to Chris's Chaos. I am your host, Chris Cortez. Tonight we are covering the quarterfinals of the G1 Climax. It was held uh, on uh, August 10th, 6.30 p.m. Japan time, of course, at the uh, Funaba Funabashi Arena, Funabashi Sini uh, General Gymnasium in, uh, Chi Pre in uh, Funabashi. That is in the Chiba Prefecture of Japan. So, yeah. Man, what a match. What a night. What am I saying? This was a hell of a night. Uh, every single match had something to offer. Um, I cannot believe that Evil won tonight. He beat Sonata, of course. I said it was going to be crazy. It was probably more likely, I think, that Finley would have beaten Osprey than Evil beaten Sonata. But with the help of a little bit of uh, Dick Togo and just him really coming out and, you know, putting out all the stops... He beat, he beat Sonata, so Evil is moving forward. So, uh, yeah, and, and that match was actually, in my opinion, probably one of the slowest paced match of the night. I mean, it was a, it was a match that, um, excuse me, that was probably, um, you know, not as just high octane as the other three matches in the in the quarterfinals. So I. Uh, said to myself hey i'm enjoying a beer after that night uh this is a uh hazy ipa from the what d9 brewing company it's uh called ob hazy like uh austin powers ob haze so ob hazy mm. not a bad beer not a bad hazy all right so <laughs> let's get into this I watched the tag matches. They were pretty fun. Um, and then I, you know, got really into these uh, these quarterfinals. Really just, you know, gave up, put my thoughts into everything. So I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the tag matches. Quick review. I'm going to go into um, each uh, quarterfinal match. Summarize it. Give you some, like, some of my thoughts on each match. Okay, break it down. Then give me give you some uh, some of my final thoughts to the whole show, and get into predictions of the final four. So we have a lot to cover, but before we do, please hit that like button, please hit that subscribe button at channel Cortez thirty three for Twitter and Instagram. Okay, get on it, join, add comments, tell me what you think of tonight, tell me who you think is going to win of the final four, tell me if you think there was a, like something happened that shouldn't have happened. <clears throat> Sonata probably shouldn't have lost to Evil, but it's Evil, so what are you going to do? It's it's your boy, okay? Um, and now he has a shot. He has a title shot at uh, at defeating, at, at, at facing Sonata for the IWGP Championship. He can do that now, so, which I don't think he'll do. Uh, but yeah, let's get into it. Um, now, Tetsuya Naito, he wins. I was going to wear my uh, LIJ shirt in celebration. I was, I loved it. I mean, it was, it was a hard fat fought match. Um, he just went to work on the leg with drop kicks, did whatever he could to keep the big man down. Hikaleo had some high impact moves and every single one of them really like took a toll of Naito. But in the end, he was able to counter certain moves, particularly the choke slam. He did get hit with one of the godsends. But then he was able to turn a second. I don't know why Hiklo. He he felt like he needed to do one more. I mean, that he probably maybe did, but he went for one more right off the bat. No pin attempt. Went for a second uh, godsend, and Naito used it to counter him with a you know partial Destino, and then hit the full Destino. You knew it was over. So I was just kind of laughing because of how great it was. So laughing with joy. Um, amazing, amazing. Um, Really makes you think about who's going to win this whole thing. Uh, Osprey and uh, Finley, great match. Probably the match of the night. Just the way the, these two went into each other. Evil, I sorry, uh, Finley was taken to, I think he went to another level. So I'm just saying that he wrestled his ass off. Osprey is like in a league of his own, but Finley really stepped up, okay? He showed that he could be the heel to anybody, okay? Because he's not, he's not going to, you know, He's not going to dance around. He's not going to show anything flashy. But what he's going to do is show intensity and brutality. Okay, on any, any given you know any given uh, occasion. So, not to mention he's got the whole Bullet Club on his side, who played a critical role in uh, almost 
guaranteeing his victory. Okay, what is it, if it was not for you know Great Ocon and Cobb coming you know back into the ring uh, to help and just a lot of uh, you know close calls. So it was it was a really good match. Uh, in addition to all the crazy shit that went on in that match. Okay, <laughs> so um, and then you got Okada versus Zack Saber Jr. I mean Zack was getting torn up by Okada for the most part until around the middle of the match, Zack starts applying moves and, and, and applying submissions that at one point you really thought, you know, Okada was going to pass out, you know, probably not tap out, but he did just, he did tap out to Brian Danielson, which they pointed out. And, you know, Zack Sabre really had a hard fat fought match with Okada, you know, nothing to be ashamed of in his loss. Okada's now going. So, I mean, let's, Let's get into it before we talk about predictions. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it is anybody's best bet. Like, you know, it's going to be Naito and Osprey. Okay, so I kind of want to just talk about it real quick. Naito versus Osprey. What do you think? Um, if Naito wins, it's going to be he is going to be that crap. I mean, like he's been doing. He's he's going to show his his veteran prowess. He's going to he's going to pull things out the hat. And somehow managed to win, but I just don't. I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna stay skeptical because it seems like it's working in Naito's favor because Osprey is kind of the clear cut favorite. However, he Okada Okada and Evil. Okay, if Okada wins, then and, and Osprey wins, it's gonna be Osprey versus uh, Okada for the second time in the G1, which Okada already lost. I don't think Okada's gonna take another L, so. That would mean that Okada gets his three consecutive wins. I still think it's Osprey's G1. So, um, and if he can't beat o Okada, then, you know, maybe he'll beat Evil, who, who's the guy that beats Zanata. You know, maybe Evil will will steal the victory from Okada, okay, um, with the help of, of Bullet Club, with, with the help of, or Dick, you know, mostly Dick to Togo, um, perhaps. Or... The possibility that Naito steals a victory, faces Okada. If that's the case, I could see Naito beating Okada. See, it all comes down to like matchups. Naito can beat Okada in this storyline, in, in, in the way that things are going. Osprey, I don't know if he could beat Okada two times in a row in a one G one climax. Evil, man. Evil might be, if Evil can beat Okada, he might even be able to beat Will Ospreay. I don't even know. Evil is the biggest wild card of this whole thing. But if it's a Naito and, Os and Okada, I think he'll win. I think, he'll, I think, I think Naito will win. I think that's like the, you know, the whole, like, but then again, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to remain skeptical for Naito, for Naito's sake. Okay. So there you have it. Um, that's what, you know, let's, let's get into these matches. Okay. Um, I didn't even watch this opening match, five minute match. Uh, Young Lion faces three consecutive dudes. Each one gets his own five minutes. If you tell me what you think of it, because it, it was really odd looking on the match card, and I would have liked to have checked it out, but it wasn't in the opening. It was an it was like a dark match, so we didn't get to see it. The first match was Hiromu Takahashi, Yoto, and Shingo uh, Takagi. Versus uh, Kosei, Fujita, Shane Hayes, Mikey Nichols. So you got, you know, Yoda Suji there with Shingo and Takahashi, LIJ. Great to see Takahashi flexing that junior heavyweight title. Um, Fujita on the attack to Shingo. Um, shoulder tackles, no bush. Sh you know, Fuj Fujita is a strong dude. I mean, he's holding his own. Uh, Hiromu, uh, eventually he does get a shoulder tackle, does uh, Shingo, but... Hiromu comes in, chopping the hell out of Fujita. Then Yoda Suji tagged in, takes uh, his time on the attack. Um, high back drop, drop pin attempt. Fujita fights back, gets the high drop kick, makes the tag to Haste, comes in just dropping everybody. Okay, Fujita back in the ring with Hiromu, gets a hard suplex, hooks the leg for a near fall. We're, we're close. Uh, then he goes for the wheelbarrow, but Taka fights it off. Shingo back in the ring. There's a nice... Uh, uh, a nice uh, driver. I'm trying to think what happened. In the oh, yeah. Death Valley driver into the corner. Okay. And then Hiromu hits the time bomb on Fujita for the victory. That was a cool little ending. Uh, let's go to the second match. You got uh, Shoto Umino, ELP, El Fantasma, Tonga Loa, Tonga Tamatanga, Girls of Destiny. I really like this match. Uh, I just liked the, co the combination of all the guys um, that were in that team. And then you got Tenzan. Uh, Hiro, Hiroyoshi, Tenzan, Narita, Desperados, Minoru Suzuki, 
Hanzan's a beast. You know, Suzuki, I mean, the biggest of beasts. Uh, he's a killer. Uh, Narita and Umino start this one off. Um, they had fought to a draw in the G1, and they kind of, uh, they fought a little bit, and then they had, they backed away from each other and tagged in their partners because maybe they don't want to, you know, continue this war right here and then right now. So uh, Desperado walks on, uh, just literally walks on Ta Tamatanga, uh, arm drag, Tenzon applies the Anaconda Vice on ELP at some po point, who almost submits, okay? Really close call until Umino saves him. Then Umino and Narita strike each other. Uh, super kick by ELP gets that victory, okay, in the end. Um, Narita and Umino are held back by some, like, officials, staff, young lines, what have you, and they just want to kill each other. Uh, the winners, instead of, like, high, they come in the ring, they're all going to high-five, they stop what they're doing, and they start playing, like, the slap game. That's that's what they do until they're all just kind of like going, you know, giving each other dabs. It's pretty funny. I thought it was great. I love this group. I I, I kind of want to see the girls of Destiny, ELP, and who, and maybe just to show to Umino. Why not? As a team, that would be that would be a great little faction. You know. Mm. Third match, Bullet Club. I'm just gonna say I'm just gonna say Bullet Club versus Just Five Guys because that's really what it was. Formerly known as the Just Four Guys, okay? All the original four guys. Takamichinoku comes back and I just, you know, brings a smile to my face because I just remember him competing. WrestleMania 14, uh, you know, he, he fought, um, who was it? Uh, I believe it was, I mean, I, his name was something else, but I think it was S.A. Rios. And, uh, yeah, he's 49 years old, you know? You know, this is, we're talking WrestleMania 14. It's now we're going into WrestleMania 40 next year um that's what uh 26 years okay so he was uh 23 years old you know wrestling in wrestlemania 14 what a career this guy has had okay he's just he is he go he says like he likes to say like you know don't call me a legend no, i'm not a legend he's a legend okay he, he i don't care if he was like 30 years old he's a legend i mean the guy you know, wrestled in a WrestleMania back when WrestleManias were only eight matches in the card. Okay. Back when it, back when it really mattered to be in a WrestleMania, that's how difficult it was. Okay. Not just, you know, uh, you know, just, it was crazy. It's crazy. Um, so you got, um, a repeat of Kenta and Tai Chi showing off their belts. Okay. <laughs> just like that one match that they had. And, uh, again, uh, Kanemaru, okay, Yoshinobu, he comes in to be a judge. And what does he do? He raises the hand of Tai Chi. No shit, it's just five guys. And what does Kenta do? What do you think he's going to do? He smacks uh, Kanemaru out the, out the ring with his belt. Uh, <laughs> same as before. They start the match. Kenta then demands that Tai Chi puts on the belt, that his Defy Championship. He's like, I want you to have it. What is he doing? This guy is so crafty, so wily. Um, so as soon as he starts, <laughs> Tai Chi is very, uh, you know, uh, hesitant to do this. He's very com conflicted, but it's a nice looking title. So he's like, all right, let's put it on. And as soon as uh, Kenta gets a chance, he tries to pull a roll up. I mean, this is obvious stuff, but it's great. It's just, this is Kenta, okay? Kenta is finest. Um, uh, <laughs> you get a nice hook kick by Tai Chi. Um, then uh, Kanemaru gets tagged in for some revenge on Kenta. Okay, Kenta, though, is on top of Kanemaru uh, with the help of Coughlin, Kid, and Owens. Like, uh, at one point, Coughlin has Kanemaru tw hits him, like, with backbreakers, just keeps, holds on to him, just keeps hitting him with backbreakers, like 20 backbreakers. Um, Owens comes in, more punishment, uh, takes a swig of the whiskey that's in the corner. Uh, Kanemaru then drop kicks, gets, uh, he drop kicks to the gut. Uh, who uh, Owens ends up spitting out some of that whiskey. Doki comes in, nice cross body. Doki, nice su suicide on the War Dogs. Love seeing Doki uh, every, every time. Can't wait to see him at the uh, Super Junior Fest in Philadelphia. Then you got um, Tai Chi with kicks. Uh, and then uh, Taka, Taka Mishinoki, he puts, uh, puts um, like, uh, it kind of looked like a cross face, you know, where he really just pulled on the chin of, of Gabe Kidd, okay? Uh, at some point, Taka's thro almost thrown into the ref. He pumps the brakes, giving uh, the giving the opportunity for, for Gabe Kidd to do that that closed fist. It's really just a chop, but it, it, it's a closed fist. It's supposed, to be a, it's supposed to be a knockout. So he pins Taka Michinoku, gives 
gives a nice little victory to the Bullet Club, um, who's now taking swigs of more swigs of the of the whiskey, and they do give the the whiskey bottle back, but they uh, then do all of them. Kenta and Owens does the uh, backwards wolf kiss. You know that song, and they're walking out. Uh, Gabe Kid singing that song. These are my dogs for real. This song's starting to sound that you know stick with me. Uh, Kenta and Owen are I they are firmly in the bosom of Finley's Bullet Club. Okay, they they fit really well in the in the in the new Bullet Club. So I like that. Um, fourth match: Kingston, Eddie Kingston, Tomohiro Ishii, Hiroshi Tanahashi versus Hinare, Great Okan, Jeff Cobb. Okay, um, and uh, the champs are flexing their titles. You know, um, you got the never open weight six man tag team championships. Uh, Kingston with his strong championship. And Tanahashi's in control at first, a little danger until Ishii comes in, save, you know. Uh, Kingston comes in with chops. Cobb puts punishment on Tanahashi, who does um, fire back with a, with a dragon screw. Uh, Ishii and Khan gets tagged. Uh, Ishii and Khan get tagged from, you know, from opposite sides. And uh, then Cobb and Hanare try to get involved. Uh, Ishii just dismantles both of all of them, you know, really just, you know, he can take on everybody at this point. Nice leaping shoulder tackle, however, by, by Jeff Cobb. Standing moonsaults missed, uh, but not his beautiful drop kick, okay? Super block, suplex block. Ishii gets the upper hand with a nice suplex, a vertical suplex of his own. Uh, makes the tag to Eddie Kingston. Tag to Hanare, okay? And Kingston just chops Hanare, okay? Goes into Cobalt as he screams. And then back to the corner, misses the splash, um, and um, gets hit by Cobb uh, and Khan. Okay, then a spin cycle by Khan, Cobb. Khan and, uh, you know, Great Khan and Cobb to Tanahashi, who counters with drop kicks to all three. Ishii and Kingston work on Hanari, then a sling blade by Tanahashi, exploder by Kingston. And Hanari fires back, sharp knee, but back fist by Kingston for the victory. So. You know, yeah, the champs win. Um, you know, nothing takes away, though, from the United Empire. They're going to have their night. They're still going to have their night tonight, okay? It was a big win for the United Empire when you look at the quarterfinals. So, speaking of the quarterfinals, let's get into the quarterfinal match. I'm going to have a little sip. Mm. First quarterfinal match, Hikuleo versus Tetsuya Naito. Even Kevin Kelly points out that Naito has been middling along. Chris Charlton says he's quietly been moving along and now leads, you know, they, they both like to point out how he's now leading the D block. Nobody was expecting it. And that is exactly like where we were getting with this. It's very true. Okay. Um, they were setting this up, you know, very care, very carefully. Okay. <clears throat> now bell sounds, they do not lock up. Okay. Naito is very hesitant. Uh, Hikuleo overpowers Naito once they do lock up. Clean break by Hikuleo, but uh, Naito spits on Hikuleo, okay, who then goes for a strike. Naito ducks the strike, begins attacking. Hikuleo, one strike, goes for a, just one hit, then goes for a stamping slam, which Naito just gets out so many times. Uh, Hikuleo's going to try to lift up Naito, and Naito's going to break free, okay? He is the smartest, craftiest of wrestlers. Um, so, gets away from the big man, goes low, right? Drop kicks, all right? Sending uh, Hikaleo out of the ring, and then uh, Naito proceeds to pose. So Hikaleo tells Naito to back up, okay, as he gets back in the ring. Another drop kick uh, to the leg, and um, <laughs> and then and then when Hikaleo, as soon as Hikaleo gets in, it's a drop kick, and then another, and applies some pressure. Hikaleo strikes to get out, uh, but Naito continues to apply pressure. Um, Naito applies a variation of the Indian death lock. Beautiful. It looks so good. You, you, that's my favorite move. Favorite submission. Okay. Um, Hikaleo, uh, Naito transitions to the standing position of the, the death block and then like drops down to apply more like a sharp impact on the leg. Hikaleo does make it to the ropes. Five minutes have passed. Kick to the leg, wraps the leg around the rope. Another kick to the leg, then strike on up top to the corner, stops the leg, but not the elbow. Hikaleo was snaking, so he gets his opening. Hikaleo, he gets the snake eyes, he gets the lariat. Um, so, uh, Naito escapes uh, a drop kick, uh, then hits the drop kick again to the leg. So, 
um, knee breaker, then the drop kick. Just taunts, taunt kicks now to Hikaleo. And uh, a couple strikes, then chops by Hikaleo. Uh, those chops by Hikaleo are, are, are vicious. They send Naito to the corner. Uh, but he escapes the second time that Hikaleo tries to attack him, but not the third time. So Hikaleo hits the hot shot, the lariat, the splash to the corner, suplex, and a pin attempt. So he's landed his impact moves. Uh, Hikaleo proceeds to stomp and chops. Uh, Irish whip. Naito holds onto the ropes, uh, you know, avoids that, that snap power slam. Um, fights off Hikaleo, then two more drop kicks to the leg. Now Naito goes for the neck with his uh, with his elbows, holds on the arm, hits the elbow, um, and another drop kick to the leg while H- H- Hikaleo is on his knee. So he's still he's bending on his knee. Naito says, Naito says, screw that, I'm going to hit you again. Uh, Naito goes for Esperanza, probably his biggest risk, okay? Gets caught in a stampede power slam. Then a big boot, okay, to Naito. A power bomb, Naito fights off. He goes for that DDT off the rope, thinking he's going to hit it like he, like he did to Tanahashi. Uh, <laughs> Hikaleo counters into a big power bomb. Okay, near fall by Hikaleo. Okay, goes for godsend, gets countered into a roll up. Okay, Hikaleo lariat uh, ducked and more elbows to the knee. Okay, um, and then the, uh, more drop kicks to the knee and the enziguri. Okay, by Naito, but Hikaleo catches him with a snap power slam eventually. Okay, uh, Hikaleo goes for godsend. This is when you got to worry about you know what's going to happen to Naito. And Naito counters it with a DDT. Both slow to get up. Destino caught into a choke slam. Uh, then he goes, and, and at that point, he probably should have pinned him. Uh, Hikaleo should probably have pinned Naito because he goes for another one. Naito counters that into a, like a, just a, drops him like a Destino. Uh, then he takes the arm and hits the full blown Destino. Okay, he hits it hard. And it was like, oh yeah, this is over. Uh, Marty Osami tries to raise Naito's hand. Uh, Naito rakes the eyes, just throws him down. He's like, what the hell are you doing? How dare. Kevin Kelly, I love it when he's like, how dare you? Yeah, it's it's hilarious. Um, then, um, you know, so, I mean, it was it was a definitive win for Tetsuya Naito, okay? He, he, he worked the leg. He knew what he was doing. He was crafty. This match couldn't have been better. Um, you know, I was thinking it was going to be like some sort of crazy roll-up, but it wasn't. I mean, it was Naito just literally methodically tearing apart Hikuleo, and then when the moment, you know, was offered okay by Hikaleo, okay, who who clearly made some some rookie mistakes uh, against. I mean, nothing to be ashamed of, though. Of course, the character wise, he's going up against probably one of the smartest wrestlers uh, currently in the business, definitely in New Japan. So uh, you give you give Naito, uh, you know, a foot, he's going to take a mile. So it was it was a great win for Naito. He's now progressing to the semifinals. He's taken on Will Osprey. And yeah, so let's look at the second quarter final match, okay? David Finley versus Will Ospreay. Both United Empire and Bullet Club. First Bullet Club comes down, and uh, Osprey comes out alone. Bullet Club already trying to, like, approach Osprey. United Empire, you got Jeff Cobb and Great O'Connor following along with Will Ospreay, presenting themselves, saying, hey, you're not going to mess with my guy unless you want to mess with us. So, uh, yeah. Got the you got Osprey and Finley in the ring. You know these two are looking at each other like they want to be like they both hate each other. I don't know. I see a very good um, feud between these two for 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 years to come. Okay, they now Osprey is three and one against Finley. So Finley's gotten a victory. Uh, he could have very well have gotten a victory tonight. Okay, um, but it is. I, I'm telling you, I think it's. I, I'm going with Osprey for G1, and so. They lock up. Uh, Finley go bell sounds. They lock up. Finley goes straight to the eyes. Just it's going to be all heel tactics to keep this going. Osprey goes to the hair. Clean break. A strike to Osprey. A kick by Osprey who sends Finley in the corner. Osprey is going to be just having the upper hand as far as just ability, speed, strength. He's just he's just on another level in every which way against most of, of the wrestlers in the G1. Finley is on another level when it comes to his heel tactics and his endurance. Okay. And, you know, he's, he's strong. He's brutal. He's, you know, he's, he's nasty, you know, he's, uh, you know, he's vicious. Uh, he has an aggressive side. He's, he's got a mean streak. Those things are going to come into play. Um, you know, strike to Osprey, then a kick by Osprey, sends Finley to the corner, strikes into the other corner, back body drop, forearm by Osprey, punch from Finley, but Osprey again sends Finley down. Osprey to the apron, looking for the springboard. 
top. Somebody pushes him right off, okay, before he can like actually leap off the spring uh, the ropes uh, into the barricades. He throws off the U.S. title, brings uh, brings out the table. He uh, pounds on the back of um, of uh, Will Osprey, and Cobb gets really upset. Jeff Cobb's like, "Oh, you're not going to do that to to uh, Osprey." Pushes Finley. Okay, which is not you know good. I mean, he, he could he could have gotten Osprey disqualified. So the refs send out um, Cobb. So while they're sending Jeff Cobb out, <laughs> you got the War Dogs beating up on Osprey. You got Finley flexing over here. I mean, it, you know, it's it's not looking good for Osprey. Um, so uh, and I'm wondering where Hanare is at this point. You know, where is Hanare? Uh, I see Khan. You know, he's still there. Uh, hard toss to the corner. Osprey goes sternum first, Bret Hart style. Okay. Finley stands on Osprey and again to the corner. Five minutes have now passed, and there's a pin attempt. Kick out. Osprey. More forearms by Osprey. Goes into a covert twist, then reverse with the eye rake. So Finley, eye rake. Then he applies his own covert twist. And um, Osprey explodes out of the corner, hits a lariat. He gets sent to the corner, fires right back with the lariat. Um, elbow by Osprey, then the Instaguri, leaping corkscrew, Pele kick, right? Always hits, always hits. Uh, goes up to the top, uh, looking like he was going to go for a leap of fake faith. Uh, oh no, he goes to the top, hits the springboard forearm, sorry. Body slam by Osprey, goes to the top. Finley, that's when Finley trips him. You know, Finley was clearly beat up, but not that beat up. Hits the face, uh, of Osprey. Osprey's face hits the corner when he's tripped. Fights off some more, does Finley. Back to the face, bites Osprey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Boot by Osprey in a German suplex. Goes for an Oz cutter. This is great. Finley counters it. Soon as Osprey was on the rope for the Oz, uh, Oz cutter, um, Finley just meets him up in the air and delivers a rush uh, right on the ropes and applies a Russian leg and just hits the Russian leg sweep. Beautiful. Okay. Even Kelly, Kevin Kelly pointed that out. How great that was. Osprey catches Finley with the Spanish fly, though, very easily, seamlessly. When Osprey wants to catch that, hit that Spanish fly as a counter, he does so whenever he wants, really. Um, Finley catches Osprey with a spear, though. Okay, see, another, another good, like strong, you know, nothing flashy, nothing fancy. Anybody can do it as long as you got intensity. That's it. That's, that's a heel move. So, uh, right where it needed to be, too. Um, so that was a great, great moment. Uh, and then um, hits the Dominator, does Finley. So headbutt by Finley, who also <laughs> uh, also uh, brought a table. Okay, on the apron, goes for the powerbomb. Okay. Um, and uh, Osprey escapes, hits the Os Cutter off the top rope onto the apron where, where Finley was. Looked great. Um, very brutal. Osprey. Has a smile on his face. He's got bad ten bad intentions in mind. Uh, sets up Finley on the table. What happens uh, before he could really do an attack? Gabe Kid grabs Finley off the table, uh, holds him onto Finley, trying to save him. Osprey like goes for a plancha, uh, kind of knowing that he's not going to actually hit Kid or, or uh, Finley. So he lands right on his feet, and he looks like he's going to attack uh, Finley. What does he do? Super kicks Kid, the, you know, the, out the hell out of Kid. Okay, uh, giving Finley the opening though to slam Osprey's head. Um, onto the apron several times. Okay, goes for a power bomb. It's blocked, and Osprey power bombs Finley through the table. Yeah, beautiful. So they had to replay that one. Uh, Marty starts to count. Finley back in at 19. Got to give it to him. Um, Osprey hits the springboard drop kick. Finley blocks an Oz cutter, uh, showing his strength, but una unable to block the second one and a near fall. Osprey drags Finley for the to the corner. Okay. And goes for the leap of faith. Well, this is this is beautiful. While the ref's checking on Finley, Finley grabs the ref, holds on to him, so that when Osprey hits the leap of faith, lands right on the ref, hurts Osprey, hurts the ref, but Finley's doing just fine. Okay. And what happens? You got the bull club coming in there, just feed the crap out of Osprey. So Khan gets into the ring. Okay. Tries fighting him off. Uh, he gets a lot of Ocon champs. Okay. Knowing he can't beat both of these guys up, he falls on Osprey to try to protect Osprey from getting beat up by these. This is a human shield for Osprey, for his leader. Okay, great, great loyalty. That's some serious baby face moves right there by Great Ocon. Um, and uh, then you got Jeff Cobb coming back in the ring. He's like, screw this, I'm getting back involved. He lifts up the both war dogs. Okay, Jeff Cobb and Alex Coppa. 
like right in between the legs, lifts them up at the same time and drops them. It's a great move. And then uh, Great Ocon, they're sent outside. Uh, great Ocon's like, you know, you know, get me up for a suic suicida. And Cobb is right by the ropes. Khan runs towards the ropes. Cobb gives him a little boost. And Great Ocon does a nice little, uh, you know, high risk move. Uh, hits really well. Lands on his feet. It's a pretty cool moment. Um, so, Finn, Finley's back in, back to to Osprey in the ring. Kicks uh, Osprey kicks Finley. Finley Osprey goes for Hidden Blade, not knowing that Gato just passed Finley the Shillelagh. Now this I was like, holy crap! This could be the end. This could be the how Finley wins. Um, you know, strikes Osprey right in the head. Uh, who then uh, and then Finley just summons the another ref. You got Kenta Sato comes in as Finley hits another power a uh, power bomb. Okay. Uh, only a near fall, very close call. A strike to Osprey, then goes for into Oblivion, countered into the Slumdog Millionaire Stunner. Osprey goes for Hidden Blade, caught into a backslide, kick out into a Oblivion. If he hit that, it would have been over. But Osprey escapes into Oblivion, hits that hit him hard Hidden Blade, then the Stormbreaker for the one, two, three. You knew what was going to happen after that. Uh, Osprey is in. He's he's uh, you know it was it was an all out war. That's all I, I described it. Uh, all out war between all of the of, of these members and then just a real great battle between these two individually in the ring so a lot was happening but i think it went well uh it was paced really well it had a lot of cool spots um i love the way that i love their intensity both of them are just so incredible in the ring and i really you know everyone knows that osprey is i think finley you know i hope that everyone is realizing more and more how good this guy is okay just just the way his mannerisms are the way he knows when to do things and his character it's it's not it's not common so um yeah looking forward to seeing more of his work um and they were just living laying it all in there like like it was you know this was their last match of of, of the g1 so it was it was great um but you got osprey versus naito and uh Finley is out. He was pissed. Okay, clearly. Third D block, ma uh, third match, third quarter final match. I keep saying, I keep I kept wanting to say third D block, like second D block match for, I kept wanting to keep, I hope it was the stolen blocks, but no, it's coming to an end. Got Evil versus Sonata. All right, your boy. So, <laughs> as soon as this match starts, Evil kicks Sonata in the midsection, then applies a headlock. Okay. Uh, Sonata lands a couple drop kicks uh, after finally getting out of that headlock. Then a plancha by Sonata, textbook Sonata onto Evil. Sonata throws Evil back in. Evil begs for mercy. Okay, it was, like, oh, it was a mistake. It was a misunderstanding. Sonata catches the foot though. He turns around, okay, pretending like he's like seeing if Dick Togo is coming back. And of course, Ego, Evil attacks. Sonata knows this, catches the foot. Uh, but then Togo does come back to the ring, uh, back to the arena to the ring and sonata you know is distracted so evil does get an attack in uh and then sends him outside now they're outside evil throws sonata into not one not two but uh i believe three barricades if i'm not mistaken or maybe that was later throws him into the barricades throws him into the chairs um goes back in the ring does evil sonata up slowly walking back gets back into 15 uh, and then pushed off the apron <laughs> right off the apron back into the <laughs> comes back Gets pushed again into the barricades and knocking uh, down uh, Magoto Ami, I believe, this guy on the, on the table. This is the second time this has happened. Uh, this guy has no luck, okay? Second time in a row. Um, you got red shoes counting. Sonata whips to the <laughs> exposed corner, okay? We didn't see that. Evil goes for the pin. Red shoes checking on something, okay? Probably yelling at Dick Togo. Chops by Sonata. He tossed uh, to the corner, but. Pumps a break and Evil dodges uh, dodges Evil who was trying to hit a splash. He Evil ends up hitting the exposed turnbuckle. So you know there you go. Um, let's see, a lot happening, a lot happening. So um, then Sonata drops drop kicks Evil. So Togo in the ring, but uh, does not help Evil much. So um, and. Um, Back suplex by Sonata. So Togo gets thrown out. He gets knocked out at some point in this match. And once Evil realizes that it's really just up to him, he, he alone can only do this, that's when he steps up, you know, does Evil. So um, 
evil goes for uh, his darkness. Uh, you know, uh, darkness falls. It's evaded. Sonata hits TKO. Pin attempt only two. Moonsault attempt. Sonata lands on his feet as evil rolls outside. Um, Sonata tossed on to two barricades, then, a, then the third. That's not one, not two, but three barricades. Get back in to the ring. Darkness Scorpion. That's what he was trying to apply before. Does get it this time. So, oh no, he's blocked by some punches from Sonata, who goes uh, outside, only to be attacked by Dick Togo, thrown back in again. Then he gets put in the darkness, Scorpion. Uh, and um, eventually, Sonata makes it to the ropes. So, um, Evil goes for Darkness Falls, and that's countered into Skull End. Uh, then starts uh, spinning him around while he's still in, in uh, the Skull End. Uh, is Sonata just spinning Evil? And uh, evil snapmares, like just basically rolls, does a front bump, rolls over uh, Sonata. But uh, Sonata just comes right back with a shining wizard. So that was nice. Uh, low blow by evil, okay, while the ref is distracted because he's probably, he's trying to throw Sonata into the ref. Uh, but then Sonata, you know, gets an opening to do a low blow right back to evil. I like that. So, you know, when tit for tat uh, is, is, is the champion's philosophy. Some, you know, at least on certain occasions. Togo uh, then takes out the ref, starts choking Sonata with the wire. At this point, this match should have been over, okay? Because, uh, you know, Sonata hits low blow. Um, I, I forget, I don't know if he hit the, uh, the, 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 you know, the deadfall, but it was kind of what looked like it could have been a perfect finish. Togo just literally pulls out the ref, starts choking Sonata with the wire. Magic killer countered by uh, Togo and Evil. Um, Sonata just kind of avoids that, puts evil up on the ropes and hits hits his own magic killer. Um, and then another shiny wiz wizard after throwing uh, Dick Togo out the ring, calls to Red Shoes, okay, slams evil, um, then hits the moon salt for only a near fall, goes for deadfall, okay. Evil desperately just claws the eyes in the face to counter the deadfall. And another drop kick and forearms by Sonata, but gets hit with a heavy lariat, okay, by, by evil. At this point, I mean, it's all evil at this point. Um, everything is evil at this point, no pun, yeah, pun intended. Goes for uh, everything is evil, okay, but it's blocked by Sonata, who hits an Insiguri, then a Shining Wizard. Goes for Deadfall, blocked, gets caught, and everything is evil, and, and is pinned, okay, for the first and last time in this G1 climax. So evil now is a claim to the title shot. You know, everybody, you know, Kev and Kelly and Chris Charlton, they were talking about how evil was kind of like, when push comes to shove, evil knows how to wrestle. It was just him in the end. But really, was it, you know, you had Dick Togo all over all over this match, okay? Especially when he pulls out the ref and just starts choking Sonata with a, with a cord. I mean, come on. This match was ridiculous, okay? But here's the number one question. Where the hell was the Just Five guys? They pointed it out. Why the hell would Sonata be like, yeah, go ahead and stay back here? Forget about Dick Togo. He's he's harmless, and I'm the champion. I should be able to beat anybody, even no matter how many distractions there are. Come on. Uh, hopefully, when they do have a match for the championship, he's going to have his boys with him or some sort of stipulation where nobody can be around that ring, in that ring, nothing. Um, so, yeah, that was a good match. Um, you know, Evil just, like I said, he had his times where he was using a lot of cheap shots and cheating, but... In the end, he just he's just a badass wrestler. That's what that's what it's all about. Um, so, fourth quarterfinal match, we got Kazuchika Okada versus Zack Saber Jr. I knew this one was going to be a wild one and a long one, and it sure was. And it was not boring though. It was, it was full of intensity, full of great spots, great moves. It was an incredible match. Okay, could have been easily any one of these matches could have been the match of the night. Uh, especially, I mean, especially Finley and um, Osprey and this match. Okay, I would say that Naito's right up there, really close. Evil and Sonata's kind of the slowest one, but all of them had something special, as I pointed out. Um, so the bell sounds, and they're not looking to rush into this match. They're taking their sweet time. They do eventually lock up Okada to the rope. Uh, Saber considers, you know, not doing a clean break, but he does. Um, then Okada gets uh, Saber to the rope, goes for a strike. Saber ducks. Okay, they crash into each other twice. Uh, with shoulder tackles, nobody goes down. So Saber, what you know, what he hits two front kicks, a snap, married, um, then the kick. 
uh, more bedcakes. Okada just tossed uh, Saber outside of the barricades. Then you get the feeling he's going to do that DDT. Goes for a tombstone instead. Um, but Saber locks up Okada along the barricade. Okay, you see a lot of these Cobra twists by Saber. Okay, um, and he tries to suplex Okada even further into the fans area, the crowd, crowd area. Uh, he's not able to do it. Uh, Okada pulls him uh, forward, and you see where it's going. Uh, he hits the uh, DDT with Saber being elevated on the barricade. So, yeah, a little page from from Randy Orton over here. Uh, it's sick though, um, and as Kelvin Kelly just can't refuses not to say it, the DDT outside has been Okada's best friend this whole time in the G1. So, uh, yeah, um, back in the ring, Okada with the neck breaker pin attempt. Head to the corner, go Saber um, as five minutes passed. At this point, Okada is all business, very brutal, taking his time, hurting Saber. Saber is the underdog, okay, the clear cut, clear cut underdog. Um, he has no, he does not use cheap tactics. He really just, you know, is, is, is takes pride in being like the the one of the best wrestlers, best technical wrestlers in the world. Um, so Okada is just, you know, he is the um he's the dominant one okay uh so yeah um forearm shots chops by okada applies pressure to the side of the head with a boot okada slams his head again then the elbows uppercut by uh saber um okada goes low and hits the hip slap the hip slash but saber attacks the arm chance for saber um for saber uh, it was crazy uh how much you know, the fans were kind of supporting both these guys. Um, Saber hooks Okada, though, um, into the twist, does the hit, the does the crank, okay, and then um, a drop kick right to the back of the head. And this is when Saber starts to get his, his momentum. This is where he really starts to get into that next gear and do the things that we know he knows how to do. Um, goes for a full Nelson. It's blocked by Okada. So what does he do? He puts him in a cravat. Kind of flips him over to break the kind of break the hold. Um, Saber hangs on though to Kato lifting him and the, and starts choking him, get guillotine style. All right, then a kick, flying forearm, uppercut, Saber leg drop into a lock. Uh, grabs the arm, some more joint manipulation. This is uh, just locking the other arm using the leg, doing the same type of stuff he was he was doing to Hiroki Goto. Um, Saber leg drop. And a, into the leg lock again. Uh, just uh, he locks the other arm, uses his leg to hook hook the head of Okada. A uh, saber to the corner gets caught, but he grabs the arm, leg locks the head. Okada turns it into uh, his trap breaker. Beautiful, been saying it the whole time. This is something I can I you know can't help but say that trap breaker is so effective uh, in any situation. He just he uses it, and it was perfect, perfect time to use it. Um, applies the money clip, but only for a little bit. Um, Saber up on the top rope, who leaps into a drop kick by um, Okada. Uh, Okada then lariats, um, uh, holding onto the arm. Uh, Saber gets the waist lock and the kicks, then German suplex. Um, kick by Saber, caught, but also the forearms, back suplex by Okada, misses the lariat, but not the drop kick. Landslide countered into the Cobra Twist by Saber. Zach must have transitioned like five or six times before getting the arm bar. Okay, right in after that, Okada gets the rope. Zach for the Zach driver. Okada keeps fighting. Hard forearm uppercut by Saber. Okay, weak forearms by Okada. Clearly, he's lost a lot of breath. He's doing the weakest of uppercuts, uh, and Saber's just hitting these hard, hard uppercuts. Okay, the whole time, um, and uh, yeah. Saber's looking pretty dominant at this point. Okada hits a drop kick though. He hits the landslide. Okay, he misses the rainmaker. Saber hits the Zack driver. Um, but cannot follow up with a pin. So unfortunately, Saber raises raises Okada for another form. One from Okada, hard one from Saber, hard one from Okada. They keep exchanging these forearms for a long time. Um, then a backslide by Okada. Kick out. Saber hits the lariat. Saber has the arm, goes for the uh, lariat, but sit down, pin roll up, one pin attempt, so close for Saber, I can't even, and you got that shotgun kick from Okada, punt kick from Saber, okay, drop kick from Okada, back to the chops, clothesline, Rainmaker, 
duct by Saber, and then he hits uh, Flying Magic. Okay, and then Okada hits, I think they were calling it Code Implosion or something, and then gets that Rainmaker for the victory. Um, so, you know, it was it was a crazy match where I felt like that last, like, three minutes got into, like, fourth gear, and they just kept going into each other like they were just, you know, just give me everything you got. Um, don't even call it. We're just gonna we're just gonna go in there and beat the shit out of each other. That's that's where they got in. That's where they can they got it to it. Um, that's that that's the where they were at. Um, Okada takes on Evil uh, next. So we already kind of talked about that. Um, at one point, you know, afterwards, Okada grabs the mic. He says to the crowd, "It's been hot, hotter inside though. Thanks to you, you guys. Thanks to Zach, of course." Um, so we thanks Zach, uh, Saber Jr. They have, uh, you know, respect for each other. And this match uh, went past 20 minutes. He says, he says this is a block match. It would have only, it would have been a draw, and uh, the people wouldn't have been able to see this great match, see what what they just saw. Um, there's something really special about G1. Um, two more matches, no matter who it is, I'm gonna win. He starts calling out Naito. He starts calling out Evil. He starts calling out Osprey. No matter what, I'm gonna win. He thanks the crowd. He's tired. He's exhausted. Uh, Talking about two more nights, says a couple more things, but essentially along the lines of, you know, these next these next two nights are mine. Okay, um, we're gonna make the make it rain basically. Um, and yeah, I mean the G one's pretty special around this point when there's no time limits because it's it's really there must be a winner. Um, so it's it, it it each match now is that much more important. Okay, you got some serious main event type matches. Uh, you got the leader of um, the Bullet Club. Taking on the leader of the United Empire, you got the leader of, uh, and and, and oh, the winner of that takes on the leader of the uh, Ungovernables. Okay, you know what? You got the leader of Chaos. Okay, <laughs> defeating the leader of TMDK. You got you got the leader of the House of Tor- Torture somehow beating the, the IWGP champion, the leader of the Just Five Guys. So now you got the House of Torture against Chaos. Okay, you got you got United Empire. Versus the ungovernables. Let's see what happens. So, I mean, this is some straight up faction warfare, okay? But it's also about these guys cementing their status individually, okay, as being the best, all right? In one way, shape, or form, they are all trying to be the best. Um, so, this is a great pay per view, uh, pay per view, pre, uh, premium live event. No, this is just, this is just New Japan World, you know, doing its thing. Uh, so, and it, feel, it felt like a big time pay per view. I mean, I, love to watch this over anything else throughout the year uh, this is some great stuff there are only very few uh premium live events slash pay-per-views that can compare to this these types of cards back to back to back and they have delivered every single time um so it's been great um so those are my final thoughts on the, on this card and how great it was uh like i said um it could be anybody's best bet um, it just, I think it d- depend on who goes to the finals, okay, will determine who I would want to say is going to win. Now, as far as just who I think is going to win, I'm going with Osprey. Um, I'm going with Osprey. That is kind of my top guy to win right now. Um, and if I have to guess Okada or Evil... I, it's hard to bet against Okada, but I mean, then again, Evil's been doing stuff. He just beat the guy that the, the guy I thought was most likely to win besides Osprey, and if he can do that to Sonata, maybe he can do it to Okada. So I wouldn't mind seeing uh, a nice match between Evil and uh, Will Osprey. Evil being like you know the ultimate kind of you know hurdle, okay, because of how cheap he is. Osprey, I mean. This time, can he do it again? Uh, it would be an interesting story because now, um, you know, he would have his time. Well, I- ironically, he said he couldn't beat Osprey um, in under 20 minutes. Okay, it will go to a draw, but Osprey did beat him, and now he's gonna. If he, they do face each other, they're gonna they're gonna have uh, no time limits. So, wouldn't it be ironic if he could not beat Okada? You know. The other way around if there was no time limit but i just don't see any of this stuff happening i i this doesn't make as much sense to me so um this is and if, if osprey is going to win this is about osprey this isn't about okada anymore at some point okada's got to take the back seat and i've loved okada's work especially these last couple of year, uh, years as he's, he's gotten older um but at some point you know you got to kind of focus on 
the guy you're trying to focus on. And I think that's Osprey at this point. If it's not Osprey, I gotta say it might be Naito. Uh, otherwise, yeah, it could be Okada who gets that third consecutive victory. I'm not gonna be surprised. Then you see Okada and Sonata for Wrestle Kingdom. You know, Okada gets his title back. Okay, this is just, you know, rinse and repeat here. Okay, first he feuding with Jay White, you know, who took his title. He's feuded with, you know, Kenny Omega so many times. Okay, gets his title back. Uh, Shingo Takagi, you know, gets his title back. <laughs> like, it's, he always gets his title back. I mean, it's his title. But, uh, yeah, at some point, you know, you got to kind of, let some of the other guys take the, take the limelight. So, what happened to John Cena? What happened to Okada? Uh, what we really want to see is Naito get his last, like, hurrah, because you know that's coming first. It's his, you know, retirement. Uh, and I think he's got one more good run. It's sad. I and mean, we all talked about it. Plenty of com uh, people have talked about this, that Naito won the IWGP Championship the last time. Uh, he did was during the co the pandemic, so it was really kind of uh, underwhelming. Uh, it felt bad, uh, but that, I did love that that you know when he did win the title. Um, so, anywho, it's been fun, guys. Uh, you know, I'm obviously tired. It's pretty late, but I I wanted to get this recording in so that I can edit it and do some stuff with it um, tomorrow and uh, be able to. Uh, have it presented to you guys. So I'll have it in the morning. Um, you know, try to clean it up a little bit. It should be good and ready for you. And uh, yeah, you guys have a good night. I'll see you Saturday, okay, for the, uh, the uh, final four, okay? Have a good night. Bye. <laughs>